From April, a controversial reform affecting millions of people will see the disability living allowance phased out and a new benefit called the personal independence payment phased in. Campaigners claim that the change will result in real hardship for some, but ministers say that the current system is out of date and it isn't reaching those who need it most. Well, in the first uh, of a series on welfare reform, our social affairs correspondent Alison Holt considers the arguments for and against. These letters are now being sent out to more than 3 million people in the UK who currently get disability living allowance. The benefits being replaced by personal independence payments. The government says it's essential reform. But many people with disabilities view it as cost-cutting at the expense of those who can least afford it. The idea behind disability living allowance is that it's a benefit that helps people with the extra costs of their disability. They may choose to spend it on support at home, specialised equipment or on the additional costs of getting out and about. Now, personal independence payments have the same job to do. It also means that all those of working age who get DLA will be reassessed. For many players here at this London Titans basketball session, that's already causing real anxiety. The mobility allowance is a lifeline for people. It, what they're doing is a blitzkrieg. They basically are blowing up a system and hurting a lot of people to get to a few. And I think that's wrong. This wouldn't happen, basically. We wouldn't all be here playing basketball and having fun, doing, having our independence. Everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's worried about it. But the government insists the current system isn't sustainable. Disability living allowance costs more than £13 billion a year. There's been a 34% increase in claims in less than 10 years, partly due to disabled children living longer and an ageing population. It's estimated the reforms will save two and a quarter billion pounds over three years, and it's expected nearly half a million people will lose the benefit. The man leading one of the two companies that will be assessing people is Stephen Duckworth. He gets disability living allowance himself, so understands the concerns. He says many of their staff will also understand, as they too have disabilities. We haven't been set any targets to reduce benefits. We've been set targets to drive up quality, uh, service improvement targets. For those who are most in need, the funding uh, will be there and available for them. But Ian Clarkson, who has Parkinson's, will take a lot of convincing. Past battles over benefits have left him, like many others, with little confidence in what he sees as tick box assessments for PIP. If you've been diagnosed by consultants and, and, and they know to what stage of the disease you will be at 10, 12, 15, 18 years, I can't see how anybody that hasn't got medical you know, knowledge can make a better decision. The government says there will be independent reviews of the system to ensure it works as well as possible. Alison Holt, BBC News. A business consultant.